All right. Here we go. I was just trying to find our notes. Tara, should we talk about um, which devices go in which holes? That sounds a little risque. This is well, the John and Tara podcast. I only use my I, I Apple Pencil every once in a while, so yes. I just... Yes, and you can't plug a lightning into a USB 3. I just, it was not occurring to Just me. so everybody knows. Uh -huh. <laughs> John and Tara podcast, John and Tara Bachland. You can yes. find us at Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts. You can find us on YouTube, John and Tara Podcast. You can find us on Podbean, John and Tara Podcast. We do have a Patreon on Podbean. Pretty cool. Um, and we have one episode up in our patron, uh, Patreon, and that's uh, episodes that go up in our Patreon are only for the people that are patrons, and that's four bucks a month. So we're going to keep uploading and build a big library there. So, And we'll have uh, patron-only conversations and live videos also. And I think the intention for that one is more so like those are conversations that we're not necessarily having Stuff that you wouldn't have out in the public, right? Yeah. Stuff that, you know, is a little more personal going into um, things that, you know, are a little more personal, but we've learned from and um, can dive in deeper to help you guys with stuff. Well, and also, yeah, listening to people and, and hearing what their concerns are and then potentially being able to have some answers or some guidance to some answers, that kind of thing. So there we go. Have you not found Hi. your notes yet? Um, I am obviously... Cheers, we got juice this morning. Oh, there Here. we go. All right. <laughs> kind of a, some thuds. Well, you get started recording right away, and I wasn't finished setting up, mm. and my keyboard is not... There we go. I got the keyboard attached now to take notes. All so. right. <clears throat> well, I'm glad you take notes. Yeah. Because I generally don't. Well, we had been. We're, we're kind of refining our system, right? Over Now we're at about 100 podcasts, right? Yeah. yeah. This would actually be 100 on YouTube. Woo! <laughs> but it, we have more on Podbean because we did some lives, and those technically don't count in the numbering system, but they count in the quantity. Hmm. Yeah, so it's a little bit odd. Okay, I have topics. Whoa. Yep. We're doing it. I like to stay on topic because inevitably we will wander. So uh, what is it? So I think that a key to a good marriage is continuing to try to impress each other, you know, trying to and impress, I think, is the right word as well as please mm -hmm. and be pleasing, pleasant. So how do you, so I was listening to a, a book the other, a book or talk, I don't know, they all t kind of tend to blend together after a while. And they're talking about how women, you know, even into the marriage, the main way that they'll try to continue to impress or please their husband is by altering their appearance. And, you know, typically with makeup or dress or, yeah. uh, could be various ways and I would say I, th I would say that's true like I I well obviously I'm not like I'm in a robe right now you know I have <laughs> I have my morning wear and there's a reason and, this is an audio podcast <laughs> right <laughs> but uh, you know I still you know want to look decent for you in the morning in particular or throughout the day you no, know i don't expect you to look i i know what you look like in the morning we've been together <laughs> now for over 20 years it's not a mystery what's going on in the morning i mean my hair is you can tell which side of my head i slept on you know all that kind of stuff it's not the time to impress your spouse in the morning but i do think there is something about you know showing effort mm. and i do think that is something that i do still strive to do you know it's not the same obviously as when you're dating mm -hmm. but you know I do want to within the the parameters that I can in particular please you and so 
what what is it that you would say do you agree first of all that that's something that's a key to a, a long lasting marriage so that <coughs> excuse me that to me sounds you know i'm i'm beyond i i love it when you dress you know when we're going out you dress up and you doll up and you do you'll do your hair and you know i don't like a lot of makeup you know that um i like you know when you're wearing cute outfits you know some of the colorful ones that you have that have you know different designs on them and stuff it's it's nice to you know look at you and go oh she's looking nice tonight and that kind of thing but i'm not super superficial you know I'm, how is it that you perceive that i'm trying for you like i haven't given up uh well no you you do take care of yourself you you know you don't do your hair every day but you work from home too so i don't i don't hold that against you you know i'm glad you work from home it would kind of suck to do your hair every day for coworkers and and people that you had a place you were going to um when we go out in public we you know if you haven't done your hair you put on a, a cute hat you know it's and you you do you are presentable in that i'm not i'm not like the kind of guy that needs lingerie and you know all that kind of stuff i'm you know well pretty... then maybe i kind of misdirected this by starting out by talking about the physical visual stuff well and... why don't you talk about it why don't you say what you like about me you know because i'm always putting on airs <laughs> trying to impress <laughs> Well, um, I haven't been very impressive over the last few months because I kind of had a, a long-term sickness, so I've been kind of frumpy and, you know. So how have I been impressive in the last several months, let's say? Well, I think generally it's, it is still, still similar to what attracted to me, me to you in the first place and that that's you're a, a forward-moving person, you know, and you're... You have things that you're striving for and that you're continually working on your capabilities and working on improving your situation, whatever, if, whether it's physically or um, business-wise, that uh, you're a forward-moving person. Um, you're very... So that's for us specifically, I mean, in this specific scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So even while I've been sick, I'm still forward moving. Well, it's trying a different, to heal myself and yeah, that type of stuff. It takes on a different, yeah. um, different mode, right? <clears throat> yeah. So since you're not saying anything that's superficial, like I dress up and do that kind of stuff, or I got big muscles or whatever, <laughs> what what what's your next topic? <laughs> okay. Well, my next topic is, so... I'm way more into spiritual things. I'm way more into um, the dynamics of the metaphysical between us. You know that. And we could probably talk about that on a Patreon talk. Um, but there's a yin and a yang, right? There's a dynamic between a man and a woman. And there's a balance to be had. And there's roles to be played. And... You know this this type of stuff is really necessary even if people live in the big city and they're taking ubers everywhere you know that there nothing has changed in our society you know it's it's uh i don't see any difference other than modern conveniences or or structures buildings you know from when we we're on the open plains of america going west you know and and building log cabins to you know, you back then you had to acquire a domicile and then you had to build it, right? You had to acquire food, you had to hunt. You had to, ha you know, you had to have a relationship. You didn't want your wife stabbing you in your sleep, you know? <laughs> you had to be a, a decent guy, a woman had to be a decent woman. You had to provide for each other, you know, whatever things you were doing and today is, is different. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's no different. It's a little bit different in the sense that people have much more leisure time and they have much less survival skills 
Well, I think there's a, an interesting contrast there. Like, yes, we do have more leisure time, but at the same time, we occupy much more of our time. You know, like, as you were talking about, you know, you need to build the cabin or go hunting, I think there's a lot more time to naturally connect with nature and have that silence. And and I, I miss that, you know, like life, even though we have machines to do our work and so forth, it's so easy to be, and almost it feels necessary to fill every moment with stuff, you know, like um, I'm, I'll be listening to a book and preparing for this podcast or a meeting or, you know, thinking about something and is some, I think it's easy to fantasize sometimes about what it would have been back, like back in the day. And, you know, when you really don't know, well, you watched little house on the prairie, so you pretty much knew what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, you know, but there were, I mean, people died a lot younger. There weren't, you know, solutions like we have for especially health stuff, you know. And even though uh, I don't agree with all the, the health, the, the way things are dealt with in the allopathic health community, um, there's also amazing things that literally save people's lives. So it's, it's kind of like you, you, that you get both sides of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think we have, you know, more like modern diseases or diseases, not even just in the body, but they show up in the mind and the body, or they can originate from the mind even, Mm -hmm. that because of our lifestyles, and, you know, I'm very much, I'd say especially over the last couple of years, gotten more into this, you know, as you you mentioned wanting the, the spiritual life as a couple, you know, that even first of all, your relationship takes time, right? To, to have just a good relationship, but then to add on the spiritual component, you know, that's like a whole nother big layer. And, and for me, I mean, honestly, I, I catch myself, not even just catching myself, but just admitting that, you know, my, a good portion of my life is thinking about how to survive and thrive in this physical world. And so the spiritual is, is kind of a, is a necessity, I believe, but it, but it's, is really a, um, I mean, it's quite a privilege when you can get, privilege is not the right word that I want to use, but it's, it takes a whole nother new level of effort mm-hmm. to really thrive on that level. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Go ahead for uh, next topic. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I have to strain my tea real quick. I All right. Didn't, didn't have it open. So I've been, I, I ordered these books that I thought that we would read. And it's called For Men Only and then there's a For Women Only. And I had so- heard someone recommend them. Can you set this over there, please? Yep. And so I just thought it would be interesting to check out. Well, fortunately, I am a type of reader that does read the beginning of a book and doesn't just dive in, although I do like to dive in. And uh, I found actually in the For Men Only, which is about women, or maybe it was for women only. In one of them, it says that it suggests you read the uh, the book that's for the other person first. Mm-hmm. So, like for me, I'm reading for men only, which is about women, and to go in and highlight some notes for your partners. So like this one is totally correct about me, or you know, for me not so much. You know, because they they surveyed thousands of people, but there's still obviously variances among people. Yeah. And this, this chapter in particular, uh, now I'm kind of cheating because I thought that we would end up reading these both first and making notes and then compare notes, but that may never happen. No, so. I haven't gotten into them yet. <laughs> so 
this chapter is about how your wife or girlfriend is wired. Um, and it was really funny. Mm -hmm. as I, I underlined that part of the book because when I read it, uh, I read how your wife or girlfriend is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it totally says wired, but uh, obviously my brain was playing a little trick on me. But this chapter is Windows Open. And it's about how women, if you use the analogy of a computer, always have multiple windows open in their brain. And they're thinking about this and that and this and that. And men are basically one window at a time. Take care of this, move on to the next thing, take care of this, move on to the next thing. And that men just really don't get why women have those multiple windows open. Now they get into it. Uh, now this is probably the topic that I've identified with most. And so, so here's a quote, a woman's memory circuitry is more tied to language and emotions. So she's more likely to have pop-ups about her feelings and what has transpired in a relationship. As uh, one woman wrote, if all men are truly visual and can't help it, then, they, then I think they should please understand that women are truly verbal and can't help it. For example, the things men say to us are in mental tape archives that are as real today as they were the moment they were spoken. And they compare how men, you know, will visually have pop-ups, you know, of, of images and just comparing how that's very similar for women verbally, emotionally. And definitely the that rings true for me as far as like the multiple windows open. I do think part of it though is that as, as human beings, we need to be aware of kind of coming off of this previous mm -hmm. topic, you know, the spirituality part of it, that especially these days with so many things going on in our lives, we have to control and even limit mm -hmm. how many of those windows or just programs are being opened and allowed to, to be open. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> so that was really true. I found very true. I think there's, the, although they don't get into the evolutionary psychology or biology side of it, they're more strictly just kind of pointing out what are the tendencies of men and women. I, you know, they give some examples and I think you could without yeah you know I totally get it with uh, between men and women um, women having lots of windows open it's a it's a different way of saying it um, and women remembering everything you know we we kind of vilify the women for remembering things you know like well back when this was going on this because what they're doing is they're relating and you know, if, if you're if you were relating something that I did to something that's going on, I might feel um, like you're trying to convict me again of whatever it was that I did that made you upset with that circumstance earlier. Mm. You know, and but once a guy understands that a woman is is relating the topics and maybe expressing how she feels like this, she they, women usually don't say it. This made me feel exactly like when this happened. They don't say that. They just bring up, well, you know, two years ago when this happened and, uh, you know, the, the emotions take over and then they express themselves and then guys go, well, what the heck? Do I got to hear about this again? <laughs> you know, And yeah, basically you do. Um, it, it is okay to talk to your lady and there's, we could do an NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming. We could do an NLP drill um, in the Patreon and we could talk about that and we could help people get over um, bringing up pain from the past into the future because that's a very important thing not to do. Um, you don't want to be reliving your past over and over and over again. Um, this happens when uh, women are dating and they have a bad experience and they date the next guy. They inevitably make that guy pay for the previous guy's shortcomings or problems or whatever he did that she didn't like because she tries to put up the barriers, right? Yeah. And guys don't do that. Guys don't go, well, you know, this girl cheated on me, so I'm going to put a tracker bracelet on this new girl, <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
Well, uh, I will say that we've been watching Love is Blind, and I think it's a season three season, and it's actually, it's been really good. Uh, they do, an, I think, an amazing job. It's interesting. Mm. Yeah. There's a couple, um, Matt and Colleen, and Matt was previously married, and his wife cheated on him and got pregnant. Mm. And so he just, like, at any... Dis- you know, and sign. Then he, at the drop of a hat, he's gone. He's, he's like, I'm out. Yeah, you know, he's he, packing his bags and he's he, he's heading out. Where? Okay, so I'm I'm. So he's an exception, like that. Yeah, I they, would say women generally, it seems like are bringing in a lot of baggage, but men, it's yeah. much more dramatic. You gotta have so you gotta have skills, right? I mean, because somebody talked to somebody doesn't mean you get divorced. You know, it doesn't mean you take off, right? Yeah. Because somebody made a mistake, you know, and, and said something they shouldn't have said doesn't mean you get divorced. It means you talk to them and you go, you know, what were you thinking? And the person can say, well, I, I was just having, I was just in the conversation. I wasn't thinking per se Mm -hmm. about anything. And, and, and women are, women essentially are mothers, right? And so when, when a guy comes, this is this is why guys can get gals when they start whining and talking about their current relationship and how they don't get treated well, and then all of a sudden that woman wants to treat that guy well, right? They're like, "Well, that's oh, that shouldn't be happening to you," and they, you know, oh, blah blah blah, you know, and you know, if if that guy went and talked to a guy, so let me say this: guys that talk to women about their relationship problems are not trying to fix them; they're trying to get the woman they're talking to. If they went to talk to a guy, the guy would go, well, why are you, why are you with her? <laughs> you know, the guy would say, sounds like she's a crazy biatch. You should probably not be with her. You know, it's very practical when you talk to men. Yeah, I could see that in the conversation, in one of the conversations that was on the show. I mean, oh, guys sure. kind of just hash it out, yeah. you know? It's, yeah, very different. Yeah. It's like, tell me exactly what you said. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that. And the other guy's like, "Yeah, I shouldn't have done that." He's like, "Okay, good." <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean, it's it's kind <laughs> but, of humorous. But the woman way. heard it, and it turns into this whole crazy. You know, the women are over there talking and telling everybody, and then the guy comes in, and he wants to know, and he's like, "Oh man," instinctively he knows I'm not going to get the truth out of the women. I got to talk to the guy, and you know, and and at least the guy said I shouldn't have done that. That's like an admission of guilt. That's like an apology. And that's like, I won't do it again. Mm-hmm. And the other guy's basically saying, you better not do it again because I'm busting you for it now. And, you know, there's all there's a lot of unspoken stuff that happens between men because those two guys could have gotten a fight. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting there, they're at kind of a small table. It could have been a slap fight. Could have been a punch <laughs> fight. Could have been tables flying everywhere. Could have been, you know. And they know that. You yeah. know, when the guy comes up and says, hey, what'd you say to my woman? You know, that's like, okay, where's this going? Well, better that they were probably sitting down. It looked like a good sturdy table, you know, <laughs> and uh, it looked like they weren't, they had been drinking it that It doesn't evening, matter when a guy gets mad, he can lift that table and slam it. Yeah, it'll be worse. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, it's so interesting. I think, you know, growing up, seeing women you know get all worked up really you know i didn't want to be like that you know and i realize there are different ways that that can come out you know but at at some points i'm i kind of like you know reading these things or watching these shows kind of as for comparison and stuff it's like oh that's so inconvenient to be you know, someone says something and then you get all, you know, five, five windows and 10 emotions, 10 windows and five emotions come up, you know? Well, first of all, they do it on the show to create problems, right? Because it's a reality show. So, yeah. so they have a script written and it's like, now Michael's got to talk to Melissa and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, Michael's going to talk to Melissa. What's going on? You know, cause they didn't get together. And then they, and then Michael says, to Melissa, well, you know, actually, you're my type. When I finally saw you, you got the petite body, you got a cute face, long hair. You're the kind of girl I'd go out with. 
and Melissa's just going, well, yeah, that's that's nice. Well, if we had met out in public, you know, for sure, you know, whatever would happen, happen, you know, blah, 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 you know. And, and then Michael goes, ooh, hey, man, I still got a chance with her. While he's engaged to someone else, and Melissa's engaged to someone else. Mm -hmm. well, that's not their real names. I just made it up. I don't even remember their real names. <laughs> but um, I remember the Colleen, right? Colleen is the one girl. She's one of them, yeah. She's the one that he, this guy was talking to. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember the guy's name. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a script, right? They're literally running off a script. And, all right, now you guys, every... The couples that didn't choose each other have to get together and they're all in bikinis and swimsuits and they're all drunk and they're in a pool and it's hot out so they're dehydrated and drunk and you know it's it's a setup yeah and so it's not necessarily reality but these people don't understand either you know that they're they shouldn't be doing what they're doing you know if they want to because some of them are 30 and they're single and you know, that's not a good thing. It's, it's just not. So the windows, having the, the thoughts and stuff open, like mm. I can see evolutionarily why that would work. And this is going to sound like stereotyping. Oh, it, no. But, uh, I mean, just think about how many thousands and thousands and thousands of years this was the case. So, you know, the women are raising the children. How many children are around? You have to have as many windows open at least for each child. Yeah, you're you know, cooking, one, washing, one kid's down at the river, the other kid's out in the hay bin, hay bin and the other kid's taking care of the, the donkey that ran away. And, you know, you got to, and then at the end of the day, if you had five or six kids, you got to count them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so you're thinking about multiple things. Like you're literally having multiple programs going on at the same time, whereas men typically have been very focused, you know? That's how, when I was a toddler, I got down the road a half a mile on my trike. <laughs> my dad was focused on what he was doing. Yeah. Well, back then, too, if you were building a cabin, you know, you're probably building it because you needed shelter from wolves and bears and stuff in, in the, in the pre-modern days, you know, where you had a wagon and you stayed in the wagon until the cabin was built and, and you know, and the guy had to focus, you know. And then when he was hunting, he had to focus because you have to you have to have eyes on the back of your head when you're if you're hunting a deer. There's bear around, you know. And then you get you gotta you gotta shoot that deer, you gotta gut it, and now you released all the smell of the meat and the blood and stuff. And now you gotta get on your horse and you gotta book it back home before the bears and the wolves show up. Yeah. You know, and back then it was it was not just the wild west; it was the wild an wild world of animals. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, I think it's even if it feels uncomfortable to some to listen or to to admit, you know, that I mean our our bodies, our brains, how we operate have evolved over thousands of years. So what and has it done for you reading some stuff like this because you're married to a man? Yes. That's me. <laughs> what has it done for you to learn some of this or did you know this or are, is it shedding new light for you or is it just interesting because there's more details you understood the overall themes but I think specifically on this windows concept you know how many windows are open you know I I have realized where you have been very helpful to me you mm. know because In what I way? just thought I just thought I had a busy mind, oh. and I probably do, and I have worked at you know focusing. I mean, I can focus really well. Like if I sit down to work, when I sit down to work, yeah. I mean, I can go for hours at a time, yeah. and I have to literally like set a timer to take a break, mm -hmm. and so that it's not a problem in that sense, and. Like, especially the more projects we have going on business-wise, naturally, I'm going to have more windows open, so to speak. And so it has helped me specifically to differentiate between what is maybe just a natural tendency as, as a woman and what is maybe an area that I need to, or, or do I need to do something to help 
settle my brain some down. Some strategies you might have learned when you were growing up. or Right. And yeah. so in a sense, I it, all my adult life, I've, and even as a teenager, I've, I've worked on being comfortable with the, being a woman in a woman's role. And what I mean is, I don't know exactly what happened in the environment, but I think there's a lot of social programming and engineering about, you know, I do think it was is helpful, you know, to be encouraged, you know, by my parents, by my grandma, you know, and society in general that, you know, you have options as a woman, you are capable, these, these opportunities are available. But I do think it pushed it was pushed too far in the do sense you think every do you do you feel like anything or everything or just a few things they were telling you were not beneficial were not like did you ever question you know why is everybody telling me to do all this stuff did you think it was just information or did you feel that it just didn't jive with what you wanted for yourself i would say the latter um and because I, I would call it familial programming not social programming well, I think there's there's social along along with it. Well, your parents would have been socially programmed, right? Because they were deep into the workforce for many, many years. They were part of society at large, and you were just a young girl. And you may have gotten your social programming at school, but you were also picked on and bullied and that kind of stuff. So you were outside of the, the main social norms, too. Yeah, so it, it's so complex, you know. But that your it's, family was programming you, like constantly telling you, yeah, don't don't have don't trust a man, don't share your finances, don't, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I don't remember all the like specifics. So first of all, I want to be careful because I am happy with who I am. Yeah. Well, that was and, stuff you said to me, I, and I realize this is this. The fact that you don't remember, I found it. I shared it in Instagram with you. I found a guy talking about, a psychologist talking about how the, the, the narcissist that pushes everything on you, the person that's being pushed on, doesn't remember everything because it's, it's all kind of, uh, this is the way I would describe it, it's all fake, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work and it doesn't jive in the world. It doesn't jive for the person that this person is foisting it upon right mm -hmm. and so then there's there's these snippets that are cut out of your memory but you actually said that to me you know early on in our relationship then i don't remember certain things no you said to me that you were told not to trust a man you know keep your finances separate make sure you have your own checkbook your own job your own money that kind of stuff my my parents now i'm a guy my parents never told me anything like that. They never told me beware of a woman. They never told me, you know, I mean, I was on the phone one time and my mom heard a girl talking to me and I was, I was like a 13 years old and a 16 year old girl was on the phone telling me she wanted to have my babies. Right. And my mom just so happened to be listening because she's like, why is this girl always calling? And then she heard that and she railed on that girl. Like you would not believe. Mm -hmm. And she never called back. <laughs> and you know, I was just sitting there listening and I'm just like, oh, wow. You know, it's, I didn't know. I didn't even know what sex was at that point, you know, and, and, but my mom didn't get upset with me, you know, after that, she was just like, you know, I, I don't even think she said, you got to watch out for girls like that. I, I don't even think she said that she just railed on that girl. So she wouldn't call back. Well, I would certainly feel, I mean, I felt as as Justin was getting older, like warning him about girls. I mean, it's a different era yeah. also. Well, I talked to him about girls because I'm a guy, you know. Yeah. My dad, you know, my dad married his high school sweetheart. You know, they met in in high school. I think my mom was 15. But they couldn't see each other outside. Like, they had to visit in their parents' living room. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. so very different times. The time. parents back then, yeah. She couldn't get in a car with him. Yeah. If he wanted to see her, he had to come over and they'd sit on the Davenport. Right, <laughs> right. And so just very different, very different times yeah. and very different structures. Back then they had very ornate ashtrays that had their own stand and they were, you'd put it by the couch and you'd be smoking and you'd put it, 
There's so many funny things. <laughs> so uh, uh, we kind of gone down the trail. So um, w going back, 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 back up <laughs> to. Uh, so yes, there are a number of things I don't recall. I do recall, you know, being raised to be, you know, the strong, independent woman, and that you need to be able to make your own money, uh, have your own bank account, you know, and and I can see, you know, the the different eras, you know, why that that would be taught, you know, and. I still think, you know, I think of what would I teach a, a girl these days and I think to be, and as I am preparing stuff for wifey school, you know, I would still coach young women have a, a skill, you know, a, at least a job trade that you can do. Yeah, but you, do. Wouldn't, you wouldn't coach it because it's against men. You wouldn't coach a girl to be mistrusting and and you know don't allow the guy to do you know you wouldn't have those same characteristics in your talk no you would say make sure he's you know that you're if you're in a relationship that you know everything feels right everything you know bring him home to meet us you know your dad's going to take him on a drive and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so i think there is a lot of questioning internally about you know what it what it is to be a woman and it it took me quite a while to actually be comfortable and okay with girlness and womanliness you know i wouldn't uh it was terrible to start wearing a bra it was you know just you know it was like a, a simultaneous pull to like be curious about makeup and doing my hair and stuff like that but also kind of a Ugh, like ugh, I just don't want to go there and I think there was you know so what I'm getting at is these to men at least kind of commonly known traits about women you know that they're emotional or the like you start on one topic and then it, that brings up an emotion and a topic of a, something from two years ago right mm -hmm. and I, th I think I saw those things to a, an extreme growing up and so it was like I don't want to be a woman you know, if this is what it is, I think subconsciously that's what was happening. You saw crazy. Yeah, I saw the extremes. You of saw these. abusive from the woman. Yes. You saw verbally, emotionally, mentally abusive, and physically abusive. Right. Is this still going? Yep, it's going. Okay. So again, I don't want to get too far into things because. You know, there's, well, you there's should just say that. You should just say, I saw abuse in three areas, you know, physical, mental, and emotional. You don't have to get into any topics, but you should say it because what, how in the heck would you not want to be a woman? You have to illustrate that. Okay, so, you know, it, I saw, you know, my mom continually having fights with her mom and sister. Mm -hmm. And so just even that one example, it's like, uh, you know, I don't, it would be like, are, okay, are, can we go to grandma's this weekend or are we off, you know, for a while, you know? And so it was like, I don't want to be that way. You know, if, it's, if this is what being a woman means, you know. You saw the character traits the women in your family were, were eliciting or putting off and you just didn't want those character traits. And, and when you were young, you didn't understand, well, if this is what women do. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to... Because that's all you had as an example. Right. And I was like, wow, you know, I could look to my dad and be like, wow, he's a lot simpler, you know? It's like, um, you know, I would see how he would try to resolve something and be like, yeah, that makes sense, you know? Like, and so I'd want to spend time with him and, you know, be more, you know, I wasn't confused about, you know, I was fine with being... And you loved being with your grandma because there was no manipulation with your grandma. Not the, you know, I mean, yeah. And there's just always fun things to do with, mm. you know, grandma was always, uh, there's always something interesting to do with grandma. She was never trying to leverage you against anybody. She just wanted to be with you. Yeah, I think so. And 
So as far as like how women think and what am I, your question was, you know, what am I gaining out of reading these things or listening to these things? It's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I do think like a woman. And in some senses, it's like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in, in another sense, it's like, okay, well, that makes sense. You know, that, okay, that's just... Yeah, maybe sometimes I'm overoccupied in my brain with with things going on. And then in another sense, it's like, okay, well, that's just how your brain is literally wired. Mm. And so that's helpful. Um, but still, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish it wasn't that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it matches. I mean, I, you know, as a guy, I might be like, you know, sometimes I'm like, here we go again. Um, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish you could see that. You eventually do see it or, or you get over the, you know, the emotional thing you're going through, which is fine. You know, and, and most guys need to know that's going to happen about every two weeks. You know, because <laughs> women are on a bi-weekly, monthly cycle, right? You know, every, you know, your cycle is either beginning or ending, <laughs> you know. And, and then you got maybe two weeks worth of, of no cycle, right? Just everything is pretty normal and stable and then... It's like the moon phases. It's either always waning or waxing. It's, right. It's, it's not static. It's, it's not a bad thing. You know, it's not a... It's just the way things are. It is, you know, but it's just inconvenient like when it's... Particularly in business, you know, is one thing when you're maybe dealing with just an inter interpersonal relationship thing or life and it's like oh yeah I recall that feeling in that situation and uh, I will or will not you know deal with it that way you know when it comes to business I wish those things wouldn't come up I wish the feeling side wouldn't come up so much because and I could handle it more like a guy just in internally because it just gets in the way you know, and that's, it's really, because then I have to deal with like multiple things, you know, not just the situation. I'm dealing with my emotional side of it too. And I guess I've seen you get emotional about some business stuff too. So sure. it's not, sure. it's not, um, you know, when you think you can trust somebody and then they show you that they can't, you know, that's upsetting. Yeah. You know, because that's all we have is trust. You know, that's, business it doesn't matter how many contracts you have how many POs you have how many agreements you have all we have is trust yeah you know that somebody is going to continue down the path that they agreed to based on the contract you know so right I understand it <laughs> so it's helpful you know just like it's kind of like therapy in a sense where you're able to like identify it and see it from a different perspective that's really helpful uh, I think it's been very helpful that you know you don't seem to see it as a problem in a sense I, I think it would be very exhausting to live with or deal with a woman regularly and uh, you know all these windows are open and you're having to deal with one thing or another and hopefully she knows how to organize them well right or has high RAM capabilities well, real men are built for women how so well, it's, it's innate, right? We're built to handle stuff, you know, and, and we are built sometimes to just say, knock it off, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. And, you know, there's times when I say that, when I say, you need to let that go. Or when I say, well, I understand, you know, and, I'm, and I'll listen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And real men do that. You know, if I got the time, I can deal with it. If I don't, you're gonna have to suck it up until I can be back here and and sit around with you and you know. But I prioritize our relationship. Our relationship is not. It has never been one of I'm going to date you and then marry you and then we're gonna go our separate ways in life, right? Go to separate businesses, go work for separate places, separate people, separate companies, whatever. It's always been I want to have a life together with you. And I've had to, I've had to work and provide and do that kind of stuff. So I've been away most days, 
but some days you were with me because you could be, you know, some days you did work in my business for a while and now we have both our businesses under the same roof so we can see each other for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and we can hang out when we want. So that, that's my life. That's the life that I wanted, mm -hmm. you know, and I've made lots of sacrifices and investments to have what we have, you know, it's, and you know, it's, it's, you know, we're not, we're not balling on a, you know, forty-six million dollar yacht in the Maldives, but we're we're in our place here, and we're we have time together, and we know each other very well, and we're doing a podcast. We got a hundred podcasts in the bank. So I think you just gave a few good phrases. You know, where the, you know men can help their women. You know, let it go. Hopefully, she can receive that well. <laughs> um, interesting that there's there's a. There was a movie, a kids' movie, girls mostly. Was it um, Frozen? That the main song is "Let It Go." Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what would be some other tips that you? Well, have tips for, for the guys. You yeah. can't say "Let It Go" when it's things that she's upset with you about. Okay. You can say "Let It Go" when it's other things, right? When it's other people, when it's, you know, and then you can say something like, "Well, that person's a nasty biatch anyway." Yeah. You know, and you don't want to say I told you so, but you can say we talked about this a few weeks back, you know, and, and you know, you, you never want to say I told you so, but, <laughs> but you want to, you can remind her gently that you brought it up and pointed out some things that her friend was doing or whatever. Um, you know, one thing that popped up in my mind here is that I wanted to say is men and women can't have opposite friends. They can't have male and female friends so like you can't have a friend and go out and have coffee with the guy I wouldn't put up with that and I don't do that I, there's no way I would so I don't think that is good for a relationship and a male friend always wants to sleep with a female friend and so it's uh it's kind of funny because I watched a few videos they've been they've been doing that they've been like hey are you friends with uh so-and-so's your girlfriend's boyfriend here yeah yeah yeah. I think if he call, you called him up he would they call it Netflix and chill which basically means get together and hook up yeah and they're both like no no and every guy they call is like uh yeah 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 that's uh <laughs> I've been listening to this um the <coughs> the evolution of desire which has been re re it, it's um, evolutionary psychology and this uh, ev evolutionary psychologists did lots and lots of studies, right? Well, one of them was, it's on a college campus, he's a professor, so I'm sure a number of the quicker or shorter studies probably went on in college campuses. But um, one of them was they had, what was it, um, men and women asking each other, would you go out on a date with me? would you go back to my apartment with me or would you have sex with me? And so this asked one of the questions. <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, it's basically kind of what you would expect, you know, that if they're asked, the, if the woman was asked on a date, there's, you know, a, a moderate acceptance. Will you go back to my apartment with me? Much lower acceptance. Will you have sex with me? They just met on the street, right? Mm -hmm. No one said yes. But you flip the script, right? And the woman is asking the man, will you go out on a date? Higher percentages, yes. <laughs> will you go back to my apartment? Higher percentages, yes. Will you have sex with me? Higher percentage, you know, even just some saying yes, yeah. as opposed to the women saying just flat out no. Right. And and usually, they, they statistically, it was the men, women would only say yes, I think they you know, did kind of correlative studies. If like the man was just so outrageously good looking that they're like, yeah, heck yeah, you know, like just taking that opportunity. But in general, it, would, it is what you would assume that yeah. the the men are like score. You know, if she's you know within. Well, her. women have to be the gatekeeper. You know that that's what it goes back to. Women have to control the access because men want the access. Yeah. And women generally don't. Women want a relationship. They want, 
they want security, they want something more, they want long-term stuff, you know. So this is where, and I actually have to get going pretty soon here today, so I can't do sure. a really, really long one. We're but an hour. It's yeah. Fine. So you told me things, these things early on. So before podcasters and YouTubers were talking about this, before, not before this guy was doing these studies that Dr. Buss, um, Evolution of Desire and several other books, he did those in the late 80s. But as far as like this, this information being on the forefront, right? You were telling me things like, um, if you smile at a guy, that means to him that you're interested. And, or also, if a guy has a relationship with a woman who's in a committed relationship, he's interested in more, you know, in her sexually, you know, is looking for, is opportunistic. Mm. And honestly, and I'm saying this for the women out there who are, I, my generation in particular, there was a significant amount of erasure of that common sense kind of stuff. Like, and maybe it's not totally common sense because there's a funny story where your parents talk about the short time that they lived in Minneapolis and your dad had to tell your mom to stop smiling at people on the street. When they're like, walking down the street. Yeah, because yeah. like it, they're gonna get, they're gonna beat up your dad or something. <laughs> and so, you know, they grew up in the country, like a country bumpkin kind of thing. So maybe it's not all. Well, my mom knowledge. thought you had to say hi to everybody, and if they wanted to talk to you, you had to talk to them. Yeah. Because she was very innocent, and that's not what you do in North Minneapolis 50 years ago. Right. Yeah. And so there's a bit of that. There's it, whether it was erased from our society or you're just raised differently. So for she and I would be in the same camp as far as like smiling at people on the street. You know, yeah. like I had to learn that too. That there are some areas that you just you know you make eye contact sometimes just to make sure that they're okay. You know, mm. um, but but as far as these things and and doubting men or what are men really thinking. I think those were kind of conveniently erased at a certain generation point, particularly my generation, and you were kind of programmed to doubt men, you know, or like I was told literally like you can do anything and be anything, which I appreciate, I think, where the the key people in my life were trying to help me in that in that sense but it was also so misleading in and confusing really at a fundamental level and so it even years into our relationship like i half believed you like part of me honestly how and many I'm years saying this, did it take to uh, hang on believe me. <laughs> to so I'm saying this, I, I realize this may be like aggravating for you, you know, to yeah. have like, okay, she's believing someone else and not me, you yeah. know, I'm just going to acknowledge that. <laughs> but it did take hearing from multiple guys in particular, and then kind of, and solidifying it too from someone who's actually done studies of thousands of <laughs> people of like, okay, that is what guys think, like vast, vast majority, let's just say. Of guys are thinking they're that is opportunistic you know I listened to a thing the other day and this mother was um, contradicting her husband at every turn and they were talking to him both and and she's like they, they asked the mother do you love your husband oh yeah you know do you think he's a good man oh, yeah do you think he is competent in everything he does yeah they're like then why are you trying to stop him from turning his boys into mini me's his little you know and she didn't never thought of it that that way she was shocked she mm. was like i just think he's being too hard on them mm. and he's they're like well if you trust your husband with everything you probably should trust him that he's raising your boys properly mm -hmm. and not cut him off every time because you know otherwise your boys aren't going to turn out like your husband they're going to yeah. turn out different I saw this clip, it just showed up in my feed, uh, it was a short, and this, uh, I should tr go back and try to find them, because it, it was um, this black woman teaching this, the scenario looked like it was, um, and I just had this 
point out racially just kind of like so you can get the the feeling of the environment as mm. well um so this black woman was probably i don't know in her later 50s maybe early 60s looked like she was coaching this mom across the table mm. was holding her hand the mom was crying and then it looked like her son was kind of diagonally from them in so he was in he was there but he was not the focus and this woman was like so powerfully speaking and it was just like it shook me mm -hmm. and she said you don't she was essentially saying you don't realize that we women are not realizing that at a certain age they they're destroying their sons and that if they don't allow their sons to be around their dads or men that they tear them down mm -hmm. And holy cow, she spoke so profoundly and just like, I mean, it makes me emotional now, just yeah. like recalling yeah. it. It's like, and you could see in the young man's face, like, you know, like a mixture of emotions, like she's saying the truth, yeah. you know, kind of thankfully, but like all the emotions are being torn down too, you know, and um, it, it is, you know, I think it's, it's, we uh, yeah boys learn empathy from men they don't learn empathy from their mothers mothers don't show empathy to boys and it seems so contrary mm -hmm. right and it's like it's like when looking look, back when you're looking at a man you're looking at somebody who could kill you and if he bends down on a knee and starts talking to you and is rational with you that's empathy and that's how you learn it. I think ironically, so as I am putting together material for wifey school and, and thinking about that and have other big projects on my plate, but I'm still so like, this needs to happen kind mm -hmm. of thing. And that's why even just doing this podcast is essential. Mm -hmm. I... I was really fortunate that, that the time in my life when we met I was still questioning life. Mm -hmm. I, there was still, a, even though I was a confident 18 year old, I still knew that there were things that I didn't know. You know, I had just come out of foreign exchange, just completed high school. And when, when you're in a new environment, like the year abroad in Brazil, you're, I'm, I was constantly confronted with what I didn't know. Yeah. And so it was already a regular part of my life to be molding and changing myself. And, you know, I came back, loved school, loved the learning, but did the math and like, you know, college just doesn't fiscally make sense. And then, you know, we had met, fallen in love, got engaged. And so f there was a very fortunate, opportune time like that. My iron, the proverbial iron was hot mm -hmm. and and I was malleable and but also thinking you know I wasn't just dumb and going with whatever but I was fortunate that you had had the relationships you had had that you had made the decisions that you had made into for your next relationship with me mm -hmm. that you have wonderful parents and that they were accepting of me despite your past you know <laughs> they didn't take your past out on me yeah i mean there's just so many blessings to really i think that's what all of this from the books i'm reading the podcasts i'm listening to watching love is blind i was gonna say you know? we're literally watching love is blind and we're watching parents reject certain people you know and and we're watching some parents just sit there and go, you know, my daughter needs to live this way. My son needs this. But, and the parents need to butt the hell out. Well, I actually think the one that, like, that one family that's like, my daughter is used to living this way, they're at least, th that's to a man, though, in, the, in a sense, too. There's a difference. I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, but that, okay. But that guy knows, the, the dad knows who he's talking to. He already knows how much that guy makes. He probably makes yeah. fifty, sixty thousand a year, and the dad might be a multimillionaire. And you can't say that to a guy. My daughter's used to living a certain way. He's dooming his daughter to never getting married. 
Well, I think in that sense, I think in that situation, he's already seen his daughter push away men, and he's and because she's doing it also, she's bringing him around her friends, and and is like just telling you everybody speaks their mind. This just telling you, I, this is the way I yep. live. Every we get together every Friday, whatever and, it is. And yeah. so, in a sense, they're actually being really upfront in in a kind of a genuine, sincere but if way. If you're not malleable for your relationship you'll never have one you can't you can't go out you know we'll go out every friday well okay that that's nice when you live a single lifestyle right but when you get a you are married your life ends comparatively to your single life here's where i think it's different because you can't just drop and run at a second and she wants kids well you can't just drop and run in a second you know you can't there might be something coming up for a friday she doesn't get to go out with her friends well all her friends are single well you actually have to get rid of your single friends when you're married. Um, at least one of them. No, two of her girlfriends were married in that group. Okay. So I think they they just have that. That's their lifestyle. Contrasted to um, Bartise, who met Nancy's mom in particular, and her mom was like, you know, I'm I'm nice and loving and I'll love you and stuff, but if you cross my daughter, you know, I'm gonna be the you know. Blah, blah blah blah. Now I I think that is. I mean that kind of g- goes without saying in a way. You know if you are. I think all the parents need to back off and they need to talk to the person. Absolutely. You know, what do you What do you plan for the next five years? What is your, you know, and and then listen. I mean maybe maybe that dad is a millionaire and that guy has a great idea. Maybe that dad can invest. Right. You know, I mean. There's so many different ways to go about it. The, the, all these people, they have, they have no decent experience. I mean, yeah, they've been married, but you can tell that they're not. I mean, to just throw out, well, my daughter loves living this way. She loves having lots of money. She, well, How does she do that? Daddy giving her money? Probably. Yeah, well, that ruins a woman. How old is she? And what shape is she in? And she's demanding things from her future husband. You know, she's fat. You know, she needs to take care of herself. She needs to work on herself. She's just, she's just sliding through life on daddy's money. And, you know, she's got a, a teenage lifestyle and she's what? She's almost, what, 27, 28, almost 30? Yeah, something like that. That's terrible. Yeah, it, it probably wouldn't make it any easier. So just to kind of reinforce the, the, the fortunate timing and everything that I was... Yeah mentioning yeah you were and that's what every every guy knows you know get a gal when she's young i married you when you were 19. yep it wasn't a master plan i didn't even know i was going to meet you <laughs> you know right. guys now would go oh yeah do what john did look at what john did no that that wasn't it yeah i met somebody that i got along with i met somebody that we became friends before we dated you know, and you try to set me up with other people. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to make somebody a wonderful wife, and you have. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to be me. Yeah. Oh, there's so many topics and tangents we can go off on, but I, I think, you know, absolutely, I guess maybe in the conclusion for me is, you know, keep reading, keep learning, keep studying, keep observing yourself. Have someone that you can, or multiple people, hopefully, that are really genuinely care about you and don't have I mean you obviously have your own motive when you're Um, talking about problems talk about yourself if you go to somebody and all you do is bitch about your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend you're bitching about somebody else and that person is not sitting there take that complaining home and talk to them and say I love you I'm having a problem with this is this something that we can change that's the only way you get something done. Talk therapy doesn't help you. Psychology won't help you. TV shows won't help you. Books won't help you. You have to talk, first of all, about yourself. You have to say, why am I having a problem with this? Why is this bothering me so much? And then you got to decide, is this something I can live with or not? And if, it, if you can, keep your mouth shut. And if you can't, open your mouth to the person that, the only person that can change it is the person you're having a problem with. And if you do that, you get over your problems very quickly. Well, hopefully, if they can communicate back in a in a 
Anyway, some people shut down. How and, else? How else do you acknowledge? I love you. I'm having an issue with this. Is this something that we can change, work on together? Something you can shift. Something. How how else can somebody? What somebody going to go? I don't want to f and talk about that. I don't want to. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then you've decided already. You can't live with it. If they say that, then you're done. Yeah. It's that simple. It's not difficult. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't realize when you were answering those questions that you were you were that close to you and I being done. Which questions? The questions I asked you like that. I, every time I had a problem, I came to you and said, I have an issue with this. I love you. But Are you I, saying I was on thin ice? What <laughs> if you had said, absolutely not. I'm not changing that. I had decided it's something I can't live with. I actually told you it's something oh, I can't live with. Well, yeah. Yeah, if you said it that way, clearly I know that that's, yeah, that's... How, how else do you I respond? I can't live with you. If you want to stay in the relationship, how else can you respond? Other than, yes, I can work on that. Yeah, or I can, let's keep talking about it. Let's yeah. see how we can work on this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, this is going to go into another hour, but that's a good Bam. next topic. All right. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.